thank you, Sharon, very much for inviting me to formally open this exhibition at Gang Gang Gallery, where I would have been last Saturday in person. But um, gosh, how things have changed in the last couple of weeks. I'm delighted and honoured that you have asked me to be part of this online opening and, um, and to speak the words that I have prepared for the opening had I been there, had we all been there last weekend. So here we go. It was the American uh, painter, UK-based Whistler, who died in 1903, who famously declared that the price he charged for his paintings was not for the relatively short time it took him to paint them, but for the long years he had spent learning to paint them with ease and spontaneity. And it's exactly the same thing for the potter who works, for example, on the wheel. They work for years to acquire the skill that will permit the execution of work that must be made quickly, and they're very much governed by the spinning wheelhead and the deftness of her or of his hand. Giving shape play on a potter's wheel is somehow magical, any of you who have ever seen it. It's rapid and it's completed in moments. But no less magical, of course, is, is the work of artists who work with clay by hand. The American sculptor Beth Kavanagh, who was due to arrive here to be part of our Clay Gulgong Festival, where we were going to welcome some uh, almost 800 people that would have been passing through Lithgow, passing through Gang Gang Gallery, and remaining with us for a week up at Gulgong for Australia's largest international ceramics festival. Of course, in this changing environment, this changing world that has had to be postponed until next April. But Beth, who I know many Australians were, were longing to see and watch her work, she said this about working, about sculpting with clay. Having tried every conceivable material, she returned to clay and she said of the other materials that they divorced her in some way from the fluidity of expression and so she grew dependent on clay. Clay, she says, is her first language and the one that is ultimately more satisfying. And this is part of the reason that creates the appeal of ceramics, work that is derived from the stillness of mind and attention required to make it. And to quote Dr. Christopher Allen, who wrote a splendid article for our magazine Ceramics Art and Perception and is also the art critic for the Australian newspaper, it's the condensation of long years of preparatory labour and training in a few moments of fluent performance. In ceramics, we see the infinite possibilities of sensibility and expression that can be conveyed by the profile and proportions of a vase or a bowl, by its depth and capacity, or by the inward inflection of its rim. And we marvel at the way sculptors continue to make sense of things to quote Andy Goldsworthy, through their art. Of course, the art of ceramics includes glazing and firing, and the subtlest and most beautiful effects of glaze require an extraordinary knowledge of pigment. And in the case of some of the artists in this exhibition at Gang Gang, an understanding intimate level of the working of a wood fire kiln. Thereby, the element of chance or luck becomes part of the ceramicist's toolkit. And this mix of the contrived and obviously partly unplanned, it somehow emulates the natural earth from which all ceramic art has been pulled from. They're using that very natural of materials. It is the marriage of idea and matter, brought about through hand and mind, united in a moment of complete and utter presence. It is my honour to commend to you the work of the artists who are exhibiting here, some who I've known for years, I've been around their work. They really are the, at the top of their game. They're the cream of the crop of Australian ceramics. And their names are Lise Edwards, Chester Neely, Bill Samuels, Susan McMeekin, Rebecca Verputen Law, Quirak Chung, Michael Connellan, Anna Cullerton, Anne Edwards, Sarah O'Sullivan, Linda Searfit, and Ebony Salama. I very much hope that you will take the time to look at their work in this online exhibition. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much for welcoming me into your mobile phones, onto your computers. 
Don't forget Clay Golgong is on next April next year. Go to our website www.mansfieldceramics.com. You'll see and read all about it. Thank you again. Thank you, Sharon. And well done to all of the artists who are in this marvellous exhibition.